today we have a gorgeous 1968 Cougar here. This is from a well-known member here in the Cascade Cougar Club who's finally let go of it. And one of my customers in Texas is ending up with it, but it's stopping by West Coast Classic Cougar first for a few updates, one of which is wheels and tires. And it's such a perfect car, there's very little else we can do, but one thing we want to do is modern tunes. Daryl is going to do the lion's share of this video because Daryl was in the business at what time? What did you do and when? I uh, owned my own installation company for audio, cellular, and alarm systems back in the early 90s in California and uh, worked for a few other manufacturers for installations for audio. Yeah, so whenever we get a call about any of our uh, aftermarket radios or original radios, uh, on our website, we usually funnel it to Daryl and he can talk speakers and wires and coaxial, is that right? Coaxial. <laughs> yeah, right. all that stuff. I, I really know nothing. Here's what I do know. I hate seeing modern DIN radios uh, cut up in a console. You know, it's, those consoles are worth over a thousand bucks now. Right. And I just don't like a 90s or even 2000s look in my classic car. I want original. So there's only two ways that are acceptable for me. One is to have my Bose wireless uh, speaker Bluetooth to my iPhone in the back seat, or send out an old broken AM radio to get retrofitted to do, well, to do amazing things. And Daryl is gonna talk about amazing things. So I'm gonna hand this over to Daryl. He's gonna walk you through pros and cons of the different speakers, Placement, we're going to be, try real careful not to hurt this car. We are not into butchering door panels and dashes here. So he, he's finesse. going to, yeah, finesse. We're going to do this update with finesse and show you what it's all about and what it might cost and where you should go. And I'll tell you right up front, we usually are not the best place to uh, get your radio done because we're just going to somebody else and getting it done. If you don't have a broken AM radio, that's an advantage to going with us is because we have broken AM radios that we've already sent in. So I just wanted to say that up front. So Daryl, I'm going to turn this over to you. Thank you, sir. Hey, everybody. This Philco radio has been converted to all the modern radio conveniences. As you can see, it's a nice new loom that they have on it. It also has a USB dongle attached to it and it has a plug-in on the side for a microphone so that you can run hands-free with this radio in your car driving down the road. It also is computer controlled with voice commands so that you can use Google, Siri, um, any of your voice command options through your cellular phone. It does all Bluetooth options through the phone uh, as far as playing tracks, fast forward, reverse shuttling through your cellular phone. Quite a nice unit. Uh, compared to the original AM radio, you can see they are basically the same. When you have this installed, no one's going to want to break into your car and steal it. They think it's just an old Philco AM. Quite nice and stealthy. I'll show you a few other things here. I have factory style speakers that fit up inside the dash, center dash of the 67.8. This is a 5x7 football is the orientation of the size. This is a dual voice coil and has dual tweeters built in. If you're limited on space inside your car and you want some form of a decent sound that sounds significantly better than a factory cone, you can go with this. It puts out or it can handle 140 watts. That would be a good accompanying speaker for one of these. If you want to step up a little bit inside the kick panels of your car, if so equipped, it will handle a five and a quarter inch speaker. Behind that are baffles. These go up inside the fender well and they keep the water from getting onto the speaker. It also has a pass-through notch here for your speaker wires so that they don't get pinched and you don't short out your stereo. Moving on to the back, we here actually do sell a six by nine with a factory style cast cover and mesh screen. It's a lower power unit, but it sounds pretty darn good for the money. Moving up to this car, we're actually going to install these Alpine units. This is a six by nine for the rear the five and a quarter for a front. And we have mesh grills already on the factory kick panels. These are done from the factory. Your car may have these in them if they're still original to the car. As you can see, they actually did some form of a heat press. You can see all the uh, sprue that's still on there. Now, for reproduction aftermarket, if your kick panels are all busted up, 
I carry several different styles, starting with a factory style, press ABS plastic, no holes in this, and kind of hard to put a speaker there when you have a ridge. So we have some options. I have a basic ABS. This will handle about a five and a quarter speaker. A six and a half is a little bit too wide for these. Not too fond of that with a larger speaker. It looks kind of funny. For you audiophiles that want a little bit more sound and a little bit more pointed sound stage, we carry this. It actually has a vinyl covering attached to it. It will run a full six and a half inch speaker and it also gives you a tweeter pod location as such. If you don't want to go through the hassles of all of that, I also carry a fully integrated 100 watt custom auto sound system that includes the kick panel, 100 watt speaker, nice metal grill, ready to go in, comes with the wiring, loom up the wiring to the stereo, and you're done. We offer several different head units that are aftermarket, not like the original Philco. We have a USA 740, very nice radio, extremely nice options, including Bluetooth. I carry the KHE USB AM FM Bluetooth radio also, a little bit lesser expensive, a few less features on it. I carry a uh, custom auto sound USA 230 and a an custom auto sound slide bar, which is also, as you can see, these are made to look like factory units so that nobody wants to break in the car and steal your stuff. With the radios that we're going to install today, this is a non-console vehicle. It uses the standard uh, shaft knobs for the radio. If you have a console car and you want to install an aftermarket radio into it to make it fit inside the console covering itself, you would want to get the elongated kit for console cars. And we're going to go ahead, if the quality of the speaker isn't up to par and it isn't a large enough diameter, we're going to go ahead and put some 16 gauge in all the way around. The factory radio wiring will utilize on the factory wire harness the blue wire is illumination, ties into the illumination circuit for the dash. The yellow is a switched, it is not a constant power. If you pick up an aftermarket radio or one of our other radios, it will require a clock lead or a constant power. You'll need to run an extra wire down to the fuse box. And with a glass AGC fuse, you can use one of these to tie in. It lets you put a blade style connector on and you loop it underneath the fuse. Make sure that's a fuse lead by the way, you don't want to have any uh, issues. If you do not want to cut any of your harness, you can also buy these from our shop. We have a few different styles. Notice there's two different sizes of bullet connectors here. And then this is an extra connector that we also sell for any other points of connection that you want. This particular head unit is of unknown variable, meaning, yes it works, I don't know what the wiring looks like inside here. It does have the factory knobs on it. Pull those. Down inside, a shaft nut. Let's see if we got the right size on the first try. Holy smokes, we did, look at that. That is a nine and sixteenths of an inch. There's also a 3 8 head bolt here that holds a nut on the back stud of the radio to keep it from bouncing. On the right side of the factory radios is an antenna lead. Pull that out. On the back of the unit is a 7 16 nut as well. And this is the culprit bracket here console model car, this is significantly harder to get to, as you can probably tell. When you go to take out a console, your radio will be built into the front of the console itself, and you can do it without taking the console out, but a lot of people like to take those out at the same time, do an updo on the console, check the bulbs, and such. Now I need to figure out which wires are going to here. There's my blue and yellow wire, and because this is a stereo car, these are the stereo cables here for the harness for left and right.
Okay, this radio is not native to this car. As you can see, this wiring harness has been grafted in with solder and some tape onto two original wires. That's the reason we're going to put all new wiring throughout the car, just so that uh, we're safe with that. We don't have any issues with anything shorting out. Next, what we're going to do is pull out the kick panels, which does require to pull the sill plates off. The antenna on this car appears to have already been replaced. We don't need to replace that. If you do need to replace an antenna, the cool thing about that is if you need to run a new wire for the antenna, you can actually use the old wire to pull it through as a fish, as they call it. And you can tape it the new end to the old end after you clip it underneath the fender. You can actually change the antennas on these fairly easy without taking off the fender. It's a task, but it is definitely doable. One click at a time. There we go. Next, we're going to the rear. We need to pull the back seats out and side panel out. And what we're going to do on this car is only run it down one side. We're going to run the speaker wires around from the left to the right rear, down behind this panel in the trough of this jam, up through this access hole, up and over so that both of them are there. The fronts are much easier to wire new because you're just going side to dash, side to dash. Okay, you're taking a break, I'm taking a break. Come on, cat, you're hungry. That is indeed a 50 year old piece of plastic. Still has the sound deadening in it. The sound deadening is so that you don't get a lot of road noise through the holes from the uh, hinge plates. And then it still has the uh, sprue from the factory. Now how they make that must have been a pretty neat jig and very hot. But if you want to reproduce that, you can make a pattern off of your old ones if they're cracked and you can sit there with a small drill and have a nice day with that. These are five and a quarter inch factory speakers with the factory baffle. So, because the uh, factory ones are still there, we're not gonna mess with taking these off. We're just gonna take the speaker out and reinstall the new speaker. FOMOCO. So that's an original 68 factory speaker. And it was still playing, but it wasn't very nice. Okay, essentially what we have inside your kick panel is a large baffle made of plastic like this. This gives a little bit of bass resonance to the speaker itself. If it were just free air inside, would not have good bass response whatsoever. It also keeps all the water from getting inside the speaker and destroying the cone. As I showed you before, there's a wire access here, which is duplicated from the original that comes in from the top. If you do not have a speaker equipped car that was FM stereo, you would only have a center speaker up inside the dash for AM. You will need to drill out a five and a quarter inch hole. You can see there's a recessed section here inside the cowl for this to go into. There's also a center point here. I don't have one here to show, but there's a center point to know that you've got it uh, centered whenever you drill it out. It's a five and a quarter inch hole. The hole saw specifically of this size are around $30, $35 online at several different retailers. This harness has been grafted on. I'm not worried about the condition of it. We're gonna clip it here and here. We're gonna take us some electrical tape just for ease of replacement and that will allow us to take this and this and fish it through to the other side if all goes well sometimes you have to pull it back and forth like such can you see that Done with that one. Right front.
Another wire on wire. Factory speaker. There's actually a really nice hollow hole to the left and the right side of the column that you can attach a zip tie to to keep it tucked. Just make sure you're not pinching any wires. Make sure you're not in the way of any brake pedal. Anything of the sort. On the speaker wire we're using, you have a marked positive wire. Actually has little pluses on it, you can see here and here. And then a negative wire. Just use a set of wire strippers. Cut you off about 3 eighths of an inch. Pull. Do the same thing on the other side. Pull. Go ahead and twist these. And get our trusty soldering iron out. Notice I'm putting a rag down here so that when I do solder this, I do not get solder splash inside the cone and melt the cone of the speaker. Of course, I don't want it on the car either. Like that. Go to the other side. Make sure your positive is still where it belongs. I'm heating up the wire and tab at the same time. It should be bright and shiny, not dull. Release. Now we should have a good connection. You see the flow bubble on the bottom and the top? That's not going to go anywhere. Good flow top and bottom. Now we're ready to install this back into the cubby. Because it's plastic, I really don't need to insulate the wires. I think we're going to be A-OK. -okay. I just want to make sure that we do not pinch anything. And I think we're going to be good. The screws that were with the factory speakers are way too shallow and they have a self-cutting head on them. We're going to use the aftermarket ones with the washers. And there you have it. Five and a quarter inch installed. Wire has plenty of extra length to it for soldering the head unit. Now we'll move on to the other side. We're going to go ahead and button up the driver's side kick panel. We don't need down this rail anymore. We want to run both of the rear speaker wires down the passenger side. The reason being, all of your sequential light circuitry runs through this channel. If you run a speaker wire down this side, you risk the chance of having noise coming through the system through your stereo whenever you turn on a blinker. So we'll run it all down the passenger side. Well, that's a little different, isn't it? We're going to take these old sill plates off. We're going to put some nice shiny stainless steel ones on. A lot more durable, a little harder to install. And don't forget for the sill plate, you also need the correct emblem. All right, so next what we're going to need to do is take this panel out to get the rear speaker wires down and limb in through the channel here. We're going to go ahead and remove the back seats. Rear seats are easy to remove. Just lift. Very careful with your side panels. They are very fragile and cut easily. Let's see if there's any prizes under there. It doesn't appear to be yet. I don't know. You're going to lift straight up. Got it. Instead of having a screw in the front with a cover plate, these actually have a little worm screw in the side. And don't forget your disc. There's also a cover plate here. Lift the cover plate off. Pull the pinch weld off. We're going to gently pull the panel away from the structure of the car. We're going to lift this up because the belt line kit hooks down behind the window. We're going to gently lift that up. 
pull it away, and we're done. We're going to remove the factory harness here for the rear speakers. We'll use this to tie or tape our wires onto to pull them back through into the inner quarter structure and down. I'm removing the factory wiring loom clips to pull the harness down with so I can get the factory harness out. I'm also clipping this defroster trigger wire back up in to the little factory holes there. This clip is actually a spring steel clip. So I think we can just reach underneath and pull like that. It is spring steel, look at that. Isn't that fancy? Is that out of focus? These are definitely 1968 vintage factory stapled baffles. However, they're only going to work on a factory style speaker that has a square base on the magnet to house these with because these are spring clips. On this car, because it was so equipped with speakers already, we simply pull the nuts off of the existing studs that pass through the package tray. That's kind of handy. These holes are pre-existing for a 6x9 speaker. And if you already have the grills, you can even reuse the grills with the studs, which is nice with the factory cast grills. These are 1972 speakers, so these are not correct to the vintage, but probably out of a Cougar-ish car. Okay. So all the holes line up, standard 6x9 configuration. Okay, so what we're doing here is I'm just hiding to the front side of the car this larger wire that we've replaced the original with, but we're going to put them back into the little factory clips because that's cool that they're here and it's clean. I'm taking this factory harness off of the radio speaker and we're going to do something similar to what we did in the front. Don't mind how bad this looks, it doesn't matter. If they got the wires in one way, you should be able to pull back through the other way and get them to pass. Okay, there's, uh, with the bottom bracket, there's actually a little bit of a slit of a hole there that you could uh, run a zip tie to to keep these down low so they don't get pinched. Now, what you guys cannot see in here, the original speaker wire has been crimped inside that bracket, causing the short, which is probably the reason we changed the radio. going to zip tie to the loom that's existing just to keep the wires tucked out of the glove box and out of the way. All right. Now in a minute I'm going to show you a trick for how to tell which speaker is on which wire with a battery. Okay, so here's your conundrum. You have two speaker wires that come through. We didn't mark these from the back on purpose. So what we do is we grab a handy battery. Any old DeWalt battery would be fine. You're just going to tap it for a second. What you're going to do is listen for right or left to the rear just by tapping the leads to the battery. That's all you got to do. Which side?
we're going to be wiring up the powers and the speakers now. And what we're looking at is red. We go to our yellow power wire. I like to solder all these connections. So I like to do is twist them back onto each other for each lead. Oh, by the way, I have put shrink tube for each lead. Now, I put down a shield here so that we're not burning our... Shut that off. Carpet. Powers are all done. Now we move on to the speakers. <coughs> and there's the last two wires for the speakers. Now the final wire is the remote trigger wire, which we're not using. So we're gonna snip it, flip it, take us a piece of shrink tube and slide that on over. This is our power wire. So, the only thing left we have to do is to button it up, put the radio into the bezel, hook up the antenna and the powers, loom it up, and we're done. I do want those wires behind that bracket so that I do not pinch them. Perfect. Now, I have a USB pigtail that we're going to run under the dash and back up to the bottom. And the hardest part here is going to be the antenna, as they always are, because it can only go in. Oh, phone call, Oh, no, the mic. We didn't hook the mic up. Hey guys, this is actually pretty cool. Here we're listening to AM radio. And then we turn it off, and we turn it back on. And it just stayed right where it was, even though it wasn't supposed to do that. Off, on. Oh, there we go. Hey, there's a FM radio. And then we turn it off and back on. And now it's back to AM. Down here we have a USB stick. It comes with a radio. This particular Aurora Design radio. Plug it in. I have this set up with just simple Velcro on the bottom. And then up here, you switch this. There we go. Not bad sound. So this radio does incorporate bass and treble controls. And you can also change tracks via the USB. All right, so we're on AM right now. We're going to go to your phone, go to your settings, find your Bluetooth options. This particular radio is an Aurora Design BT. We're going to let it connect, minimize your screen, go to where your files are resident on your phone. Now. So, here's Birdie. Let's try Birdie. Oh, hey, the horn works. So you can just set your phone down and just let it play. The other cool thing is you can also, let's try this. Let's, let's mess with the shop. Let's go here to phone and let's call the shop. 
Uh, excuse me, sir. What do you have on special today? Um, we are running a nice special on flux capacitors right now. We got two of those in, and apparently uh, Doc and Marty, they had a couple of extras left over from when they made their time machine, so we're giving them away Are we reasonable price. Are we cheaper than uh, Pet Boys on the flux capacitor? I understand they're carrying that model also. No, what we have it actually comes direct from the creator, the supplier, Doc, and uh, his his buddy Marty. They are original parts, and uh, apparently some of these parts can only be found in 1958. So these are NOS parts is what you're really saying? Exactly, yes. That is amazing. I would like, I will purchase one and save one for a customer. How about that? We'll do that. Call ended. Simple as that, you've made a hands-free phone call. Now it goes back to the radio. Uh, the antenna for the Bluetooth here, just run it down the seam of the A-pillar, up inside the welting trim, around the A-pillar pad, and you can just run it up inside the rubber seal of the roof itself. So this is quite the step up in technology to have Bluetooth technology talk on your phone, use a USB thumb drive. There's also on this radio an auxiliary quarter-inch input that you can plug right into your speaker connector and just have power out for the audio channels from any device which is kind of handy as well I don't have the cable hooked up on this but all in all a nice well-rounded installation everything's clean tight tucked um, it visually is not flashy or noticeable which is exactly what you want in a car like this so you can leave the windows down go to a show and not worry about somebody breaking in and stealing your equipment so I think it's an A-plus installation. I like the sound of it. I like the options that it has. It's, uh, it's A-OK. -okay. So I say we go take it for a drive and see how she sounds. Okay, I got a chance to use this stereo system for about a week now, and I got to say, when he handed me the keys and said it was done, and I took off from work a few days ago, it was the first time in my life I jumped in a 68 Cougar, turned on an AM radio dial, and had an instant smile on my face. That was, that was really fun, I have to say. I like how it pairs with my uh, phone as soon as I get in the car. I like all the features. Uh, I like being surrounded by sound. I like everything about it, but two things for me that don't quite work. I change cars so often, I don't think I'll ever uh, install a thousand dollar system in my car. What I usually use is a Bose Bluetooth speaker in the back seat. It's not as good, but it, it, it's a lot better than the old AM radio. And two, and I don't know the uh, answer to this question, but what do we do in 10 and 20 years from now when iPhones are obsolete and Bluetooth is a thing of the past and we have all these AM radios that we gutted to do something else with? So just something to keep in mind, you know, as the years go on, these little AM radios that we're getting are going to become more valuable. So I will say this, if you send one in to be done, make sure it's a non-working unit. Don't send in a perfectly good unit. Go on eBay and buy a broken AM radio. Don't ever use an AM FM. Those are way too valuable. Don't use an AM 8 track. Get an inexpensive, broken, non-functional AM radio to do this conversion with. So I hope between the installation and my feedback on the system and Daryl's, you'll be able to make a more educated decision on which way to go for tunes in your car. So thanks for watching.